In the late 1920s, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble discovered that the universe is expanding. Such a universe was in fact predicted by Einstein's theory of gravity. But for many years after the discovery, only very simple models could be studied. These models assumed that the universe was the same at all points and in every direction. The models predicted that the universe arose from a singular state of infinite density and infinitely strong gravity. Among relativists working on this problem across the world was a young researcher in Kolkata, Omal Kumar Rai Chaudhary. His seminal work showed how a complex universe which was not the same at all points, which rotated and had shearing motions could be studied. Rai Chaudhary's equation provided a simple way to describe these complexities and the equation has been used by Stephen Hawking, Roger Penrose and others to show that singularities are endemic to Einstein's theory. This equation will stand firm until Einstein's framework for gravity stands. Though Professor A.K. Rai Chaudhary received international recognition for his work and continued to make pioneering contributions to gravitational theory and cosmology, he remained relatively unknown outside the scientific world. This is his story. Obviously, I don't remember, I can't remember my birth, but I am told that uh, while my father was a school teacher in Calcutta, uh, my mother went to Borisha, our home district, uh, just uh, perhaps for giving birth to me. And after I was about one month old, my mother came over to Calcutta with me. After that, broadly, my life has been spent in Calcutta all the time. My teachers had somehow a poor uh, opinion about me. My elder brother, he was also a student of that school. He has a very good reputation about being a brilliant student. So sometimes I found that my teachers wondered, you were his brother. I, I had that uh, intelligence to understand that what it meant. In Calcutta, I was first of all admitted in a South Calcutta School, it is still there, Tirthapoti Institution it is called. And the headmaster was uh, apparently a very strict gentleman, but he appreciated inequality. I can uh, tell you about one incident. Uh, he was teaching and he solved one problem in the place. I, had, uh, I took courage and stood up. Sir, I think I can do it in an easier manner. He asked me, how can you do that? It is the matter. He did a child me, rather appreciated, and in the next issue of the school magazine, he put it that uh, Amal of class 9 has suggested this method. Yes, I took it as a challenge. For example, uh, uh, study of algebra at that at a stage when study of algebra has not begun in the class but it will be taken up in the next class. I took hold of an algebra book and went on studying and solving problems. It gave me great pleasure in solving mathematical problems. That was the incentive for doing this. But I went over to physics Rather than mathematics, the reason was very practical. My father told me that, you see, uh, you see my fate, that although I got a first class in 
mathematics, I was not a success in practical life. So, uh, think about studying some other subject rather than mathematics. And that is why I switched over physics. I took admission to Presidency College in 1940 and I passed out my B.Sc. Bachelor of Science in 1942. That remarkable year, 42. Of the evacuation of Calcutta, the August movement, and closely following that, the famine in Bengal. December 1941, we went over to Borisal and to be frank, with my childlike simplicity, I enjoyed that. that there is a thrill that there are maybe bombs falling and I am going from Calcutta to Borisal, etc. Et I was not at all disturbed. I was th thrilled as far as I can remember. Only on one occasion, I have seen my father in tears, and that was that, because the situation was rather bleak, as it seemed to him, that practically he has lost his job, and what he has, a school teacher does not have much of a saving, a poor saving, and what lies ahead is quite uncertain. Amal Rai Chaudhary came back to Kolkata and completed his B.Sc. examination. As always, he excelled in theory. In late 1945, he finished his M.Sc. Hoping to support his growing interest in research, he applied for a research scholarship at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. His dream of engaging with theoretical problems faded when he was assigned the unfamiliar role of an experimentalist and he failed to achieve anything substantial. Matters came to a head when after four years of work, Rai Chaudhary lost his assistantship. And I was very much depressed that all these four years, four years of my youth have been spent and I have not been able to do anything. Some, uh, I was almost losing my self-confidence that whether I shall be able to do anything at all. Rai Chaudhary took up a teaching job at Ashutosh College to stabilize his financial situation. But wanting to continue research, he approached the mathematician N. R. Sen at Calcutta University, offering to work gratis under his supervision. Rai Chaudhary had developed an interest in general relativity and wished to explore it further. Sen was not enthusiastic, but he did encourage Rai Chaudhary to publish his first paper in the Bulletin of the Calcutta Mathematical Society. This was a big boost to his confidence. New ideas for study came fast and thick, but Rai Chaudhary was frustrated by Sen's conservative approach to research. The only option, it appeared, was to work independently. So at that phase, I felt that continuation with him is more a hindrance than a help, and I left going to him. I did not tell him anything because I had no obligation. I did not receive any money or anything. I just gave up going to him and uh, produced some papers. 
that was uh, in uh, that was the idea was how assuming that the universe to begin with was uh, homogeneous then how can non homogeneities like galaxies and stars come into being i could not i don't did not claim that i have solved this problem but i uh, believe that i got some interesting results in then came uh, another paper also published in physical review and the third paper in physical review was the paper in which i uh, presented what is now called the right wave equation when you look at the force of gravity the tendency of gravity is to shrink or contract everything inwards and that leads to uh, the tendency to form singularities that is when all matter is compressed into a very small volume and this notion of the big bang universe is related to that that the big bang was when the universe was compressed in a point now scientists as a rule don't like singularities which are very peculiar things which are not consistent with reality so they were looking for uh, other models where instead of just expansion you can have rotation and other ways the universe can behave the, the work which raichaudhuri did which was known as the raichaudhuri equation was to derive a fundamental equation based on einstein's relativity to show the relative importance of different forces which are in gravity on the one hand then you have uh, rotation which prevents collapse but he also came to an important conclusion that there is shear which is twisting or uh, moving different layers on one on the other and it is the shear which helps gravity and rotation which prevents so from that point of view i would say that raichaudhuri found a way to show that einstein's theory had a fundamental limitation that there was some point where you had to say that you couldn't go beyond you had to go beyond einstein's theory einstein's theory had to stop at some point and that point is the singularity so raichaudhuri's equation essentially established a way a key way to analyze the problem of space time singularities so he left the subject in a very tantalizing situation you have on the one hand rotation and the other hand uh, shear one helps the other doesn't so the scientists in the 1960s took over from that early work and the people like penrose hawking geroche uh, derived further conditions for the universe to have a singularity and to what extent uh, the singularity can be prevented or not prevented so all this uh, work which came in the 1960s was inspired by the work of uh, professor raichaudhuri and the so called raichaudhuri equation the equation was born the same year as i was born so you know the, all the sociology associated with the, the field at that time is not known to me but i would i would say that raichaudhuri's recognition in terms of the sociology of of science of physics has come in much later than than would have been the case given that this work is so key so so fundamental and that displeases me a little bit and i'm sure it displeases many of us a little bit because my categorical statement again would be that after the the pioneering contributions of satyendranath bose sir c b raman Uh, Bengal Saha Jagdish Chandra Bose the next level is the Raichaudhuri equation In 1957 Raichaudhuri received a letter from a friend in Germany that two eminent physicists Jordan and Heckman had made references to his work in the latest publications this was the first real recognition of his work Well I was overjoyed to speak frankly and uh and uh, i was now quite confident that i am uh facing the world 
and able to give them something. That is, I, my confidence that was already there rose sky high, so to say, that I can now stand on the same platform as anybody in the world with my limited, of course, in my limited knowledge. In 1960, Jain Narlikar, a young research scholar working towards his PhD degree at Cambridge, was investigating the physical behavior of a spinning universe. The problem was suggested to him by his supervisor, the legendary astrophysicist Fred Hoyle. Narlikar came upon references to Rai Chaudhary's paper and found his equation of great relevance to his own work. When he showed Rai Chaudhary's paper to Hoyle, he was impressed and immediately recognized its significance. I wondered all the time that I would like to meet this gentleman uh, whose name was there and I was using and quoting his work in my own writings. So it, the occasion came in the 1963 Texas Symposium. Uh, in the Texas meeting, uh, there were a lot of relativity people invited and A.K. Rai Chaudhary was invited in that, uh, in that list. And uh, when I saw the name, I said, I must go and look him up. I looked him up and I then told Hoyle, who was also attending, that uh, Rai Chaudhary is here, would you like to meet him? He said, very much so. Joint introduced me uh, with Hoyle. And Hoyle, how come you were so young? I, uh, later on, I remarked uh, to uh, uh, Jant that why did he make some remark? Well, oh, uh, this remark he has made uh, previously also. When we saw your paper, he remarked that uh, it is strange that I have not seen any work by him previously. Uh, how can it be such a profound work must come from a pretty senior person? But now when you found that I am not a pretty senior person, you are surprised and expressed that surprise in the world. Until and unless he got uh, his recognition from the West, in India he was not known. He was not very much known. When he got recognition from uh, abroad, then he was recognized in India. I think this is the custom in our country. <laughs> if foreigners praise you, then you are great. <laughs> what was your first impression of Professor Rai Chaudhary? Very unsmart. But uh, a good student, promising scientist, that was my idea. He never put on these trousers and shirts. <laughs> Only when we went to USA uh, for one year, then we could manage to insist on his putting on this trouser and shirt. After the Texas conference, Rai Chaudhary spent a year teaching at Maryland University. And the students also were courageous enough. They could remark like that. Uh, Sir, I think that uh, Einstein was quite wrong here. In my class in Calcutta, nobody will question Einstein. They will even question some uh, simple things that I present. They will not dare to say that, Sir, I think that uh, perhaps you have not noted that there is this trouble. Yes, three times like I tried to encourage that spirit among my students. I don't know how far I succeeded. It is very difficult to succeed in these matters. Even before the Texas conference, Rai Chaudhary's reputation as a teacher was growing. After Ashutosh College, he had attempted a second stint at IACS. But this time his interest in pursuing relativity was discouraged by the then director, the great scientist Dr. Meghnath Saha. Rai Chaudhary's seminal paper on relativistic cosmology was written during this period. 
an achievement which is all the more admirable considering the hostile working environment. After a miserable two years, Rai Chaudhary quit. In July 1961, he was appointed Professor of Physics in the Presidency College in Kolkata. This marked the beginning of a glorious career, devoted to teaching and research. Ironically, when in 1963 he went to Texas, he was better known in India as a teacher than as a researcher. First uh, choice was to remain in the pure research line, but that became practically closed because of the attitude of people in the ISS. So, then it was, I must be a teacher. Yeah, it was a good but a painful decision. It was a painful decision because one cannot compare the conditions in a research institute. They are so favorable for a sincere research worker compared to that in the college. Rai Chaudhary spent 27 years at Presidency College, teaching and inspiring several generations of physics students. This period was considered a golden period in the history of the college's physics department. The best young brains were drawn to it, eager to learn pure science with its renowned teachers, who counted among their numbers Shamal Sen Gupta and Rai Chaudhary. There could be two kinds of teachers. One is, after one finishes his course, you will learn to do something by your hand. You learn to work it out yourself. The other, uh, who does not bother very much about the formalism, but uh, what can inspire you uh, so that you can take up the subject by yourself. But this Rai Chaudhuri's course was a perfect blend of both, I would say. One part of my job as a professor of Presidency College included uh, guiding the students in the laboratories. I did not, frankly, I did not enjoy that part. That part appeared to me very boring and perhaps I was not very helpful also to the students. But so far as the theoretical part is called, I enjoyed that very much. It was in a way not only teaching students but expressing myself. Uh, that feeling was there. Uh, and expressing myself in a way which was somewhat novel, not in the uh, textbooks. Uh, teachers are mostly trans they transport materials from textbooks to the classroom, like porters do luggage, <laughs> like that. But only a few outstanding teachers are there who really digest a subject and recreate it playfully or in a delightful manner. But, uh, we were in the first batch. Uh, he, he actually came to teach in Presidency College, uh, uh, Calcutta, in 1960. He has, uh, over the period of 30 years, produced generations and generations of theoretical physicists from the Calcutta area. Many of his ex-students are very, very well-established physicists all over the world. He was so unique that we thought there was something special about this person. And so we had people uh, following him. What does he do? I mean, he used to live in, uh, in old Baliganj in those days, and he used to come by tram uh, to Presidency College and get down from the tram. He used to wear a dhoti and a kutta, and the poncha of his dhoti he will tuck in his pocket and then walk to class. But some of us found out that there was a chanachur wala who used to stand near the tram stand and he would buy chanachur from him and eat. And we thought there must be something special in this chanachur. Well, that's the source of his brilliance. We all rushed to the chanachur wala and started buying chanachur from him. And till my last day in Presidency College, I bought chanachur only from the chanachur wala. And I feel that whatever small amount I have done in my life, I owe it to the chanachur wala. <laughs> When we started general relativity, he cited this example that if you go to the Goriahat crossing, you have a tram line. And suppose you have a tram car waiting there, and if you ask a mathematician what will be the trajectory of a tram car, of this particular tram car, the the mathematician will say that I can give you the answer because uh, 
um, but I need the force on the tram car and I need two initial conditions because Newton's law P is equal to MF is a second order differential equation. So give me the force and give me the give me two initial conditions, I, I shall give you the solution, I shall give you the trajectory of the tram car. But if you ask a rickshaw puller uh, what will be the trajectory of the tram car, he will, he will be surprised. He will say that the tram lines are there, so the tram car will follow this tram line. And this is exactly the philosophy of general relativity. We describe the, we find out the geometry of space-time and given the geometry of, this, of, this, of space-time, a particular particle will follow that uh, trajectory by itself. So, he, this kind of examples he used to I mean, use in those days. All of us, all of my batchmates, were always uh, respectful of him because of his excellent teaching, not only that, the manner in which he liked to interact with us. He had a very small cubicle where he usually took rest. Anyone could intrude any time there with any problem, any question. I never saw him uh, become irritated. Uh, teaching has also another part that it, uh, you have to go back to fundamental physics or elementary physics. And going back there is not a fruitless thing. Every time you go back teaching something fundamental, say something fundamental like say, uh, as far as Newton's laws of motion, they are very, very, very old thing. But even when you go back to that, you find something curious thing that this is hidden within these uh, laws. I had previously not yet. That gives you great pleasure. Thank you, Oshit, for what shall I say, for introducing me. <laughs> that will be rather a curious word because I believe that I am quite well known to all of you. Today, I will say a few words on rotating perfect fluids in general relativity. Rotating, that is a very disturbing moment and as I Perhaps a degree of senility prevents me from making further calculation, or at least makes that extremely difficult so that I cannot, I have not been able to proceed further. But I believe that... Uh, teaching is very important for me as well. I am, I am not as gifted as Professor Rai Chudhi. I mean, anybody will not be a Professor A.K. Rai Chudhi. That should be taken for granted. That is obvious. But the thing is, but the thing is, when I was a student, I got a lot from them, Professor Rai Choudhury and also some other teachers. So now I feel that it is my duty to give something back to the community. So it's always there, his inspiration and the fact that my life is full with them. I, had enough, I cannot repay all everything back, but I should always try to give something back to the community. So definitely he inspired as a teacher as well. Well, an academician's activities include this. Teaching students, then writing some good books, both in his research field or in teaching field. And then uh, guiding young uh, people in research work, and also doing some guiding young people does not mean that you should yourself do nothing but simply boss it over. Doing some research work in yourself. I would uh, say that uh, I would place me uh, in the B class, at most in the B plus class, not in the A plus class.
my senior friend, Professor Bento, uh, made a nice remark. We have retired in the sense that at the end of the month, we don't get a salary check. But otherwise, we have not retired. He might add that we are not taking the routine lectures that was part of our duty. But otherwise, that is uh, making our own studies, thinking about problems, uh, doing some problems if I can. That continued more or less up to say two or three years back. In the last two years, I am not being able to do anything. This was perhaps the last uh, big paper that I produced. It was published in uh, 2004, in February 2004. It was a big paper, and I think it is important. <laughs> that is my assessment. For the works that are presented here, the author is solely responsible. There having been hardly any consultations with others. However, in a wider sense, he feels indebted to many who in different ways have fostered in him the spirit of inquiry and given him sustenance and hope, without which no work is possible. And lastly, he feels glad that the universe, whether evolutionary or stationary, nevertheless exists and thus makes possible the author's dabblings and delvings. So I am glad that I can make these dabblings and delvings. I was born in 1918. My father was in the post office. My father died in 1931. I was 13 years old at that time. My elder sister has just married. <laughs>